meltdown begin. MMA meltdown on the Fight Network. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's do this thing. Triple threat style this evening on MMA meltdown. As you can see, we've got the Fight Network's John Ramdeen sitting alongside this evening. Uh, former UFC lightweight Mark Bocek will join us in a couple of moments. Uh, Mark was uh, one of the most uh, frequent guests on the program throughout his fighting career. He's been retired for about a month now, and he did the interview circuit, but he didn't do our show. Uh, now that Mark isn't in the UFC, I expect dirt. I want to find out which fights have been fixed. I want to fi find out who's taking steroids backstage before the fights. I want to find out what's Dana White really like. Nah, I'm just kidding, because Mark Bocek might want to come back someday. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're going to talk about weight cuts. we got Mark Bocek. Mark Bocek's a purist. The guy teaches MMA. I'm interested in his take on what we saw in the uh, Bellator cage uh, the other night. And... You know, there's a lot of controversy about that. The UFC and Bellator went head to head, not only head to head at the same time on TV, they were actually just a couple of miles apart. One at the uh, Foxwoods, the other at the Mohegan Sun. Television numbers are in. UFC had about 930,000 viewers. Bellator had about 670,000 viewers. But Bellator was trending on Twitter and the UFC was not. John, ton of stuff to get to, but unfortunately, because, you know, the, the Pitbull's performance against Pat Curran was just magnificent. He talked about getting revenge, and he backed it up. So many times we see fighters, oh, in the second fight, I'm going to do this. He just beat him up like a freaking pinata. And, the, you know, his win completely overshadowed by the sideshow that was Tito Ortiz, Stephen Bonner, a dude in a mask, and what was looked like a TNA-style programming as opposed to MMA. Now, for the record, Scott Coker, Scott Coker says that he swears on his father's grave that that was not set up. Now, I don't like talking about people's families, but if you're going to bring up, you're going to say this, I got to wonder, like, did your father, like, you know, do you hate your father? Do you hate your father? Like, did your father have you chained to a bed? Was he like crazy? And like I said, I don't want to get into people's personal lives, but I got to believe that Scott Coker doesn't like his father very much. My father passed away, may he rest in peace, just recently, about a year and a half ago. And I tell you what, I'm not swearing anything on his freaking grave, even if it's true. <laughs> like John Ramdeen, we got to get the boat check in a minute here, but I got to start off with you on yeah. this, John. So. Well, what'd you make of uh, what'd you make of Bellator? You know, uh, number one, you talk about Pitbull's performance, outstanding. Take nothing away from Pat Curran. He got dropped a number of times in that fight. Showed serious resolve. I would love to see a third fight between these two very talented 145-pound fighters. But I have a feeling the Patrizio Pitbull Freite. This is a guy that really could compete with any 145-pound fighter in the world. If he's in the UFC, I would imagine he would be challenging for the title sometime down the road. But I think Bellator needs to hold on to this guy just like they needed to hold on to Ben Askren but that didn't happen I digress we got to talk about the Stefan Bonner Tito Ortiz thing is it good for the sport I think you know anything that can drive eyeballs to the event to the pay-per-view to the television product I say go with it because the fact is that everybody tunes into mixed martial arts to see the action that happens inside of the cage once the cage door closes we know that's what we're watching that's why we're tuning in to see MMA but the fact is some people need to be led there and I think whether it works or it didn't work. Everybody's talking about it. They were trending. That's right. And I know trending on Twitter sure. doesn't isn't the be all end all. But the point is, people were paying attention. Oh dear God, what's going on in in the cage in Bellator? Exactly. Whether it was a debacle or not, people are talking about it. And it's like, ah, oh, Tito Ortiz is he still around? But, the but fact you're not like one of these guys. Oh dear God, this is awful. No right? way. The opposite because they're of still going to be fighting for you. But yeah. I think Stefan Bonner versus Tito Ortiz is awful. Forget about the promo. I don't have a problem with this so much. But does anybody care about seeing Tito Ortiz and Stefan Bonner? Let's bring in Mark Bocek uh, here, former UFC uh, lightweight uh, contender and uh, man who's joined us frequently. It's great to have him on the program uh, tonight. Mark, it's always a pleasure, my man. How you doing? Good to be here, buddy. Thanks for having me again. So, so Mark, there's a lot of serious issues. I was going to talk about your post-retirement and what's going on and everything, but I wanted to get your take on this as a fighter. and somebody that say, you're an MMA purist. You... You know, you, you were all about the steak, not the sizzle. You didn't talk smack. You went about your business. You're an MMA fighter and purist. So when you see guys like Tito and Bonner in there uh, with a dude with a mask, that's what put me off. You know, a dude with yeah. a mask. What, what is this? Does it embarrass you as a mixed martial artist? Or do you just go, whatever, they're just trying to promote the sport? Well, you know, 
I, I think it's like this. Coker has his own, uh, you know, he has his own agenda, and he has to, you know, cater his business model around it, right? Um, yeah, as a as a purist, I'll look at something like that. I'll look at the mask, and, uh, you know, I shut my TV off. But uh, a lot of people, they, they, they tend to like this sort of thing, and they, they kind of forget... Um, that all the people that liked the Chael Sonnens and wanted to see the, the trash talk and wanted to see the, uh, you know, they wanted to see the buildup of matches because we all know no, nobody wanted to see two guys that like each other fight each other, right? So they're, they're trying to build this. And, uh, you know, in the end, uh, it's, it's what fans ask for, you know? Fans never get happy. They're going to say, yeah, I didn't ask for this. It's different than Chael, but... Um, from what I see, the, the fans ask for these type of, you know, WWE debacles. It keeps them tuned in, and uh, that's what they want. So you see the events start to kind of cater to this. It's not like they're giving fans something they didn't want. Uh, you know, in the end, like John said, I mean, it kind of worked, right? Everyone's talking about it. It's almost like tabloids, isn't it? The National Enquirer. Yeah. Nobody reads them, but they've been in business, John, for 80 years. That's they're still it. they're still in every grocery store, aren't they? Exactly. And who was the who was the most popular fighter in recent recent UFC besides George St. Pierre, Brock Lesnar? Yeah. Who was all about the W? People say, "Oh, I hate that stuff," but in reality, you're right, Mark and John. They eat it up, don't they, they do. John? And that's what it comes they down to. It. It's like Chael Sonnen. Mark was referencing him. Chael Sonnen clearly gets it. It's is this guy should have he, should he have been fighting for the 205 pound title? Absolutely not. But you talk enough smack, you create enough interest, you make enough people hate your guts, and they want to see you compete. Whether it's to win the title or to get your ass kicked, they're going to tune in. He was doing his job. He's there to line his pockets, try to get as many people driven to that pay-per-view, and it worked. Uh, Mark, I wanted to get your take on weight cuts. There's, uh, we've seen a, uh, a whole slew of fighters recently be, um, uh, you know, be unable to, to make weight. and They call it, oh, a, a medical issue. I call it an unprofessional issue. I know that it's a savage business that, uh, that you guys are in, but at the same point in time, you know, you're told months in advance, show up at this date weighing this weight. Uh, I kind of find it unacceptable that so many fighters don't do it. What's your take on this, uh, Mark? And was it vicious for you to make weight? Are you critical as well? Am I just being a loudmouth jerk who's never fought before and saying that these guys are unprofessional for not making weight? Uh, yeah, no, I think, uh, I think you're accurate there. Uh, you know, weight cutting is uh, very taxing, very difficult, very tough. Um, I've seen it make cowards of grown men, uh, but in the end, the way I always looked at it, uh, you know, I did this for money, and if I don't make weight, I don't get paid. Um, it's a it's a very health, unhealthy thing to do. You know, you you naturally shred it all year round. You you, you want to cut 30 pounds. You want to do that a few times a year. It's really unhealthy. But uh, you know, it is what it is. There's a limited amount of weight classes. They don't have weight classes like boxing, so uh, everyone's going to have to. Uh, keep getting to that hospitalization brink to, to make that weight class, either they'll be undersized or um, they'll either be undersized or have to suffer from the taxing weight cut unless Did, they change the weight classes. So, you know, we saw, we heard, the, it is. we heard the story with Barrow in which he, he was so faint that he actually fainted in a bathtub and ends up hitting his head in a bathtub because he felt so weak. I, told, I talked about this last week in which I got, uh, I got an inside scoop that there was a fighter that was a main event fighter that was so sick he, he was going to have to go to the hospital, but they knew if he went to the hospital he wasn't going to fight, so yeah. they took care of him in the hotel room. He ended up losing the fight the next night, so he gets paid, but he got beat up. And I said, Mark, this happens frequently. Does, you know, does this happen like a lot where guys are like, you know, like sickly ill? the day before and they're, they're not going to the hospital because they don't want to get pinched like this? And did you ever find yourself in a situation like that? Well, I, I wasn't, I, I mean, I was, you could say I was on the brink for hospitalization, but, you know, uh, I, I always, you know, I always had a paramedic with me. I always had an ID guy with me or, or something. But uh, it's, it's a very strange scene when, when you see these guys and you think to yourself, uh, what kind of sport is this where these guys are actually supposed to be fighting it? you know, in peak form in 24 hours, you know it's, nobody's going to be in peak form after a weight cut like that, but it's, it's generally not just one person, it's generally both, but sometimes you see someone overcut it or overdo it, like, like a guy like Barrow. I mean, you know, Dolce can put any twist on it, yeah, I can, I can make his health cut weight healthier, blah, 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 but 
you know, uh, 35 pounds is, is still 35 pounds either way. I've worked with, with uh, you know, with with Dolce, with other with other guys like that. Uh, it's still it's still extremely unhealthy. You can put any label you want on it, but unless you add more weight classes, then you still have the same problem. Uh, so, Mark, it's only been about a month uh, since uh, you hung up uh, the gloves. Uh, what's different right now? You don't got to worry about what you eat, I guess. Do you feel better without the pressure of knowing that you've got a fight uh, coming up? Yeah, like I, I can watch MMA a little more freely now, you know, because like I was always a fan in the, in the kind of the purest days. And uh, I, I like the evolution of the sport. It's just kind of the, the rules and marketing direction that kind of that uh, that I don't like anymore. I mean, the, the Bellador card doesn't doesn't really help me. Like I just like to see the fights and. You know, when you when you get into these whole whole fiascos that the uneducated fans wanted, uh, you kind of give the fans what they wanted in a way. But it, it, it kind of it kind of turns it off. Uh, it kind of turns it off for me. Uh, but being a fan first, uh, watching these fights, knowing I'm not going to have to go through the same thing down the road, the road is a little easier. Whereas in the past, I'm like, man, I'm going to be that guy soon. That's going to be me soon, you know. So in that sense, it's it's a little better. I don't I don't regret. I don't regret leaving at all. You know, that's that's the nice part. Um, but outside of that, just uh, just been coaching a lot. That's it. Mark Bocek with us. Uh, Mark, I look forward to uh, talking to you again when we have more time. And, uh, you know, we always got an open chair for you down here in the studio at the Fight Network, my man. It's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. I'll be taking you up on that offer. I'll see you soon, Gabe. There's uh, Mark Bocek uh, with this great guy, uh, Mark. I loved uh, loved his insight. Uh, I think he called you uneducated. I think so. Yeah, I think he's taking a, a dig. You know, I'm, I'm a You're person. a lot of things. Uh, yeah. uh, just ask people on YouTube, right? <laughs> and you know what, YouTube? <laughs> Screw you. I give you the finger right now, but, you know, well, you know what, there, there it is. Chirp, chirp, chirp. Nobody knows anything. We give you John Moraga last week. Guys are chirping Joey Odessa about, oh, Odessa, who's this guy? This guy's been setting numbers since UFC 1 when you were watching the WWF, all right, jerk off? But uh, call Ram being a lot of things, uneducated, not one of them. And just uh, so people know, Justin McCulley was the guy with the mask. He was a part of Team Punishment, part of Team Tito Ortiz. They obviously had some sort of falling out. Stefan Bonner recruited him, hoping to get a reaction. And there you go, Tito Ortiz shoved Stefan Bonner. And now we've got, uh, we've got a fight. We got a fight. Once Jenna Jameson's name was brought up, you know it's it's go time. Whatever did happen with Christy Mack, let's leave the porn stars out of the promos right now, guys. The mask is one thing. Leave the porn stars out of the promos. Check out Ramsey and on the Fight Network. Joey Odessa joins me next. MMA Meltdown continues.